This week, China landed a spacecraft on the far side of the moon and sent back pictures, something no other country has done before. The mission made history not just for where it landed, but also for devising a way to get the pictures back to Earth. And this is what was sent back, a picture of the far side of the moon. Check it out. Scientists hope the mission will explain more about the origins of our solar system. Joining me now from Philadelphia is Derek Pitts. He's the chief astronomer of the Franklin Institute. Derek, thank you so much for being with us. I find this just fascinating. Can you put this accomplishment in perspective for us? What are the technical difficulties here of landing on the far side of the moon? Why is it so important that this happen? Well, this accomplishment by China really is the first of its kind. It's the first soft landing of a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. And one would think that it's a challenge to do this sort of thing, but the Chinese really do have the technological capability to make this sort of thing happen. They also have a spacecraft that's in a uh, gravitationally stable orbit above the far side of the moon so that they can constantly transmit from Earth down to the spacecraft on the moon. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had a rover on that side of the moon, and it's the first time any kind of scientific experimentation or any kind of data is going to be collected about the surface of the far side of the moon right down on the surface. So it's a pretty cool accomplishment. It is. What kind of data do you think we'll see? Well, what they're looking to understand is more about the internal structure of the moon uh, so that they can better understand what the evolution of the moon has been. They're also going to look at the surface structure and content and things of that sort, all in an effort to better understand the seismological nature of the moon and to better understand what the surface composition of the surface of the moon is. You know, I recently was at JPL in California, what, and they were talking all about Mars. But in order for us to get humans on Mars, we have to get humans humans on the moon and be able to live on the moon. Does this in some way kind of speed up uh, that process of getting people up there? Well, some people might say that this is going to be an impetus to the United States and others to uh, get their ducks in a row as far as returning to the moon and developing that as a base of operations for practice for going on to Mars. I suppose some argument like that could be made uh, because the Chinese do have some ambition to get to the moon with their own Taikonauts, their own astronauts at some point in the future. But that's not their most immediate goal. Their most immediate goal is to establish a permanent uh, presence in low Earth orbit. So by 2020, they've said they want to be able to establish a space station, much like International Space Station is in orbit now. Gotcha. And curiously enough, you know, that's going to come right around the time that International Space Station, another five years later, will be looking at uh, what its next role in space exploration will be. Well, that's when you look at the history of the U.S. and Russia, um, you know, it seems like China's kind of been on this slow, steady pace to get there. Uh, do we now speed up? Is this a new space race or are we all kind of in the same playing grounds now? Well, we're, we're certainly more advanced than China is in terms of uh, where we think we're headed and what's going to be coming next for us. But as you said, China has been slowly and steadily making progress developing their space expertise. You know, this spacecraft that landed is the fourth spacecraft that they've sent to the moon. Uh, their first spacecraft in 2007, the second in 2010. They actually sent one in 2013 that landed on the near side of the moon with a rover. And they also have sent a prototype crew cabin uh, to orbit the moon for eight days uh, in 2014. So they're moving slowly and steadily along toward their goal of ultimately getting people onto the moon. And this definitely is uh, pushing people in the other countries, including the United States, to continue developing our capability that will not only get us to the moon, but start to push us on towards Mars as well. You could say, uh, while the race is not as evident as the race was between the United States and Russia for getting to the moon first, I think this certainly is going to provide impetus for not just the United States National Agency, NASA, but also for some of the commercial space agencies that have come online recently well, that's, uh, to gonna, get onto the moon. That's what I was going to ask you about is it possible that the private industry like SpaceX or Virgin Galactic that they'll drive future innovation maybe even more so than governmental agencies do we want that to happen 
Oh, there's no question at all that those commercial agencies have really pushed NASA to, uh, to, to try to develop better capability for getting to low Earth orbit and to getting onto the moon, uh, much better than they've had before. I mean, actually, SpaceX's ultimate goal seems to be to get people onto Mars as soon as possible. Uh, you know, they originally wanted to plan to get something like, done, like that done in the early 2020s, but I think it's going to take a little while longer to do that. But what they've done is they've developed capabilities that neither NASA has or any of the other national agencies around the world have. And so they're beginning to open those doors to get into space faster than anybody else. Virgin Galactic is looking at it from a tourist point of view, but SpaceX is actually looking at it from the point of view of this as a business to get people out into space, onto the moon and onto Mars faster than anybody else. Would you go? You know, I would go <laughs> to the moon. That was a long pause. Yeah, I, I have to take a break there. And the reason why I have to take a pause there, actually, is because, you know, going to the moon is one thing. It's three days away. We've been there before. It's not so much of an issue about going to the moon. Uh, but going to Mars is an entirely different Yeah, you beast. got a couple of years getting back. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine being trapped <laughs> no. in the family car, you know, on a long vacation trip? For, and, no. And, get this. and this is the real catch, though. Any trip to Mars has to be at least two years. We only have experience with one astronaut oh on the International Space Station for 340 days without the, 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 the issue of being on Mars without supplies and all this other you know, stuff that we have to mix into it. So it's, it's going to be a real challenge for anybody to be able to make that leap. You know, the last question I do have for you is this seems to be space exploration technology seems to be the gold standard for developing countries to say, hey, take me seriously. Many countries developing their own programs now. But what would you want to tell maybe the U.S. president or Congress on the state of our space program just quickly before I let you go? You know, there is a really interesting message that goes along with this. We think of space exploration as being this wonderful thing that we can do to broaden our knowledge about, the, you know, our solar system and about the galaxy, and about the universe, these sort of altruistic reasons. But there's one other thing. The space program of the United States and all the other, you know, major economic uh, countries shows what their technological capability is. And right now, the United States is still in the lead on that. But the moment we stop developing our space exploration capability, uh, what happens is other countries begin to see that as us losing our yeah. edge. And that could actually turn into an issue of major national security. Other countries developing their capability, thinking that they can develop their capability beyond ours, might then take an eye toward thinking that maybe they are technologically superior to uh. us. And that's where the national security issue comes in. So Congress and any president need to continue funding NASA and our space program so that we maintain our lead in space exploration technology and space dominance altogether. It's a really interesting point. Well, Derek Pitts, I'll meet you on the moon. Maybe we can invite Steph Curry so he can see that it can be done. That the Earth is indeed round, <laughs> and we, were, we did go to the moon. <laughs> Derek Pitts, thank you so much. Fun conversation. Thanks, Jamie.